Hey there, Chad here with episode six of my getting started in Elm Creek for Farming Simulator 22. This is the second half of the harvest. Uh, that video was running really long, so we're just going to enjoy a little bit of music in this episode, and I'll show a couple of things and then talk about what happens after you harvest and how you might plan to sell your crops based on the fluctuation in prices that can occur from month to month. At this point, I've gone ahead and enlisted the help of a worker who's automatically driving the combine. But at some point, uh, right about now, that grain tank is going to fill up. So I'm going to drive over there in this tractor. And we will unload into this wagon. We do have crop destruction turned off. I wouldn't normally do this. We'd want to be oriented so the pipe was outside the crops, if possible. That's not the case right now. Okay, he's emptied out, so he will move on. Real quick, let's talk about a built-in control called Cruise Control. You see the items up there on the Help menu. The numbers 1, 2, and 3 are all related to Cruise Control. 2 and 1 change your Cruise Control speed, and 3 turns it on and turns it off. It's a toggle. If I hit 3 right now, if you look in the lower right corner, I have 0 miles per hour, and then below that it says 32. 32 is what Cruise Control is currently set to. If I hit 3, I will try to accelerate until I get to 32. Now, that's not going to happen here but that's what it would attempt to do. I'm going to head and hit it a second time and it turns off cruise control. Also using the brake or the accelerator will turn it off. Here's what I want to show you. I'm going to turn this down. It, it seems to work in about um, half speed increments and I'm going to turn this down to six miles an hour and I'm going to come up alongside of the harvester while the helper is driving. Now I'm driving the tractor, the helper is driving the, the combine. And I'm going to pull alongside here, and the helper knows what I'm here for, and he opens the pipe. Now, what I can do is once I'm aligned, I can hit, takes a minute to get aligned, I can hit three, and now I just need to steer. Now, as I said, there's it seems that there's like half mile an hour increments. Um, if I, and we're full, so unfortunately I can't continue to demonstrate that, but long story short, if I, if I slow down, to five, you'll see that the harvester is going to slowly overtake me. Although it's really not making up a lot of time there, is it? Six is about where we were. Then six and a half, you'll see I gotta, I'm going to pull a little forward on him now. So you do have to kind of dial it into the right spot, but it's not an impossible ask. The one thing to know is if you use helpers to drive this kind of equipment, they will not exceed what the cruise is set to. So that's kind of an important piece of information to know that if you set it to six miles an hour and you forget about it and you send this guy off to, I don't know, dump this grain, he's going to drive it six miles an hour the entire way. That's something to know about. All right. I'm going to go ahead and finish this field and we will come back and kind of wrap up the episode. There's a lot of time that's going to go into this field. I probably have another hour of work to do on this. Got me looking now, you lied to loud. I want someone to turn the volume down. Help me out, feeling down. Not proud of the way things are coming around. Cause our people broke, they're in the cold. They don't deserve what they're being told. It's too much sound. But God can't hear us when the music. 
Must be very proud. Go ahead and let us down. I know you want to. What goes around will come around when you're not see through. And that's getting old. It's just a joke. Because I read some of the best you wrote. Try not to choke. Cause I can't see us through the pistol stuff. And there you have it. Those five fields are all harvested. Took about two hours on the harvester itself. I'm gonna return that. Do that by going to the store, leased equipment. I'm gonna hang on to the trailer for a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these right away because they're very expensive. This not as much, but don't need it at this point. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what that resulted in. I'm going to do some quick math here. You can always sell stuff right away. You could always take it to whatever is, is selling and give it to the best price or whatever you need to do. The long and short of it though is that the prices can vary enough that it can make a big difference to pay attention to, to what you're actually selling for. And I'm going to run some numbers here real quick. First I'm going to return that trailer. Right, our lease there is done. I'm going to run over to this guy and jot down these numbers. I'm going to do a little bit quick math and I'll be right back. Okay, so you see the amounts that we have in the silo right now. Based on some quick calculations, if I were to sell that all right now, I could gross $110,926. And that's great. That's a good harvest. If I wait until these crops are at their peak price, I could make another forty-four thousand dollars. That's, you know, that's well, it's forty percent above what I would be selling it for today. That'd be a total of one hundred and fifty. Let's call it one hundred fifty-five thousand. I think it's worth waiting for that. There's no rush. I do have some loans that are going to uh, need to be paid interest-wise, but. I think the wait will be well worth it at this point, and so we are going to go ahead and do that. So right now it's November. The sorghum will be at its best price probably in January. The corn will be at its best price in January. The soybeans, we're going to have to wait until June. But the soybeans, it's almost a 50% difference. Right now I can sell them for about 
uh, uh, 12, we'll say $1,200 per kiloliter. And in June, I'll be able to sell it for a little over $2,100 per kiloliter. So that's a huge, huge difference and definitely worth the wait. It's been a long episode, at least for me. You saw that it took a couple of hours to actually do the harvesting. What we will do in the next video is learn how to prepare the field. I'll show you how oilseed radish works. We will cover the different techniques and we will also cover a little bit of what the payout is for preparing your field in the different, with, with the different uh, yield bonuses. So things like how much is mulching actually worth? How much is is rolling the field worth? We'll, we'll cover that a little bit to make, uh, make it more easy to decide if it's worth your effort or not. We'll take a look at that so that you can determine if it's worth your while to perform some of those tasks or not. Until next time, really appreciate your time and fair travels.